Marcus Ebele and I will moderate this session and I'm happy to introduce also our fields, uh, sorry, our senior regional marketing manager, Alessandro Maccioni, who is um, yeah, doing the uh, presentation today and also will answer the question after the webinar. The topic of today is how to design a compact and efficient one kilowatt power supply. The, yeah, just um, pointing out one thing at the beginning, you will be muted during this presentation. So this means that you cannot ask us questions via the microphone. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us your questions with the Q&A function, and you will find that on the lower right-hand side of the WebEx panel. So the presentation will be about 30 minutes long, and then after that, we have scheduled 10 more minutes to go through your questions. And yeah, if we are unable to answer all your questions within the webinar, within the live session, we will answer them later on via email. And if you have any questions left after the webinar, just email us at digital-v-days at we-online.com. So yeah, enough from me. Ah, just one more hint. Um, we will also share the link to the presentation as well as to the recording after the webinar. So in the next few days with you and you will get the presentation and also the recording. So then I'm happy to give it to you, Alessandro, and I wish you an interesting webinar. Thank you, uh, good afternoon. So um, today we're going to discuss about how to design a compact and efficient uh, one kilowatt power supply solution. I will go to the agenda. So this agenda for today. So we will start uh, with a small introduction on the ACDC power supply market, where I use, how big it is, and uh, uh, the next trend. So then we will talk about, about PFC or power factor corrector. So why is needed? The solution can be implemented and the control techniques. Um, then uh, we have uh, slides uh, about high efficiency. So where, uh, why there is a growing demand of energy efficiency solution and a comparison between bridge versus bridgeless totem pole and which perform better. Then we will have a, a look at our solution for bridgeless totem pole PSC controller. In this case, the NCP6081. So based on a multi-mode or CCM control mode. Then we will spend uh, some slide introducing our reference design. So based on the, this uh, device and relative additional key parts, key devices, able to achieve one kilowatt of power supply with very high efficiency. And then at the end, sometimes available for any question on relative. Uh, so looking at the market, uh, ACDC power supplies are extensively used in several vertical market, market including industrial, automotive, medical, smart cities, and, and cloud. Most recently, uh, the growing adoption of the wild band gap devices, such uh, gallium nitride, so GAN and silicon carbide, has uh, directly impacted the expansion of ACDC power supply adapter market. Over the past few years, owning the advancement in technology, so especially for GAN and SIC, have increasingly become more feasible also for commercial applications. Looking at the market, so ACDC power supplies are still the major power supply prototype in the market. Uh, today, we are counting around 65% of the market uh, revenue in, uh, within 2021, with uh, the DCDC covering uh, accounting uh, for the rest. And we will see a, a huge growth in the next years. So this is driving the manufacturers, as the demand of all these products in the above market segments uh, uh, is increasing. So the production of ACDC power supply is also rising. At the back of this factor, so along with the focus of uh, revamping uh, the electronic sectors, the global power supplies adapted market is expected to grow to attain a market value of around $50 billion uh, by the end of 2030, and is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of around uh, 5%. Europe is a key factor because uh, we have the so-called U5, so Germany, UK, France, Italy, and Spain, or the biggest share of the Europe power supply market, owing a strong growth in industrial electronics, industrial and automotive sectors in those countries. PFC, uh, why use PFC? So um, AC power has two components. He has the real power or active power. So sometimes it's also called uh, average power, which is expressed in watt. 
Then we have the reactive power. So usually it expresses in reactive volt amperes of DIF. As power is transferred along a transmission line, it does not consist pure of uh, a real power that can do the work once they transfer to the load, but rather consists of a combination of real and reactive power. So what is called apparent power. The power factor of an AC power system is defined as the ratio of the real power absorbed by the load to the apparent power flow into the circuit. A power factor of less than one uh, is, a, is a unit uh, indicates that voltage and current are not in phase. So reducing the average product of the two. We are looking for uh, current waveforms. Current waveforms does not follow the voltage waveform here. So in his uh, shape, you see voltage and current are more or less in phase. Okay, that's great. So this means that I have a good power factor. That's wrong because here the power factor misery is a measurement is actually 0 0.6. So we're introducing a very poor uh, THD. So this means that you have uh, all harmonic distraction with travel down to the natural line and disrupt other devices connected to the line. Here, as you can see here in the same condition, but adding a PFC stage, the current and voltage waveforms are uh, uh, very close to each other. Here we will have a very improved THD, uh, reducing all the harmonics. How then to move from left to the right? So which is the solution? The solution is that you need to shape the input current in order to match the input voltage waveforms. So this is the key point to understand. So how? Uh, insert a switch mode boost converter stage between the rectifiers and the bulk storage cap. Now, uh, just to give an, a practical example, no? uh, I think you already said this time, but it's always uh, well self-explained. So here's an example why you want to have a very good power uh, factor in your C power line. So here we have two glasses of beer. Both are objectively full and you will pay if you go to a, a pub, in both cases, a full glass. But on the left side, you have a poor power factor. So it's around 0 0.6. So this is what you see here. While on the right side, you have a very good power factor. So well above 0 0.9, close to one. And of course, I think this is where everyone wants to buy for. High demand for energy efficiency solution. Uh, over the past decade, environment concerns uh, across uh, an array of industrial domains uh, uh, at force uh, the player in the global AC power supply adapter market to lean toward the development of energy efficiency component. Most of the world's electric energy is supplied by AC power supplies, so as we saw in the first uh, in the first slides, and they are found in almost all main power equipments and devices. So this means that uh, the efficiency has a huge impact on operating costs as well as contributing significantly to emission. In the standard uh, PFC, so the input bridge rectifier is present in almost all ACDC power supplies and contribute losses that are present of a challenging in achieving the highest possible efficiency figures. However, removing the traditional diodes bridge, PFC FET and boost diodes in a favor of a bridges to temple uh, PFC arrangement enhance the efficiency uh, through the use of active switches instead of vertical bridge. Most uh, commonly, PFC use a boost converter to drive a DC level higher than the main voltage peak for artificial means. So this level, uh, this DC level is, uh, is uh, typically close to 400 uh, volt for a power supply is, uh, designed from universal range. So means from 90 to 260 volt, volt AC input. Uh, is then regulated using an isolated DC DC conversion stage to produce the required DC DC output voltage from, uh, from the PSU. Then a variable byproduct of this is that the line current flows follows the line voltage waveforms giving, in theory at least, a unit power factor. This approach is quite effective and PFC can be designed to operate in continuous, discontinuous or critical conduction modes, so, so we'll call CCM, DCM, and CRM to be uh, more practical, uh, which are largely defined by whatever energy in the boost inductor will fully exhausted during each cycle or not. Normally, there is around 2% losses within the DCT stage and 1% in the line rectification and PFC stage. Um, let's say I thought uh, this is much closer to 2% during operation in low line, so 110 uh, and 15 uh, volt ASC. 
let's say we have a, a close to 4% losses at the blue line, there is a significant challenge in meeting uh, the strictest, for example, 80 plus titanium standard level. So which requires uh, up to 96% of efficiency at 230 volt C input at 50 load and at least 94% uh, uh, at the low line. Uh, this is a specification with uh, a common use in, in server. How to make a boost PFC more efficient? Okay, you always have to remember the golden rules. So the golden rules means that a better efficiency with fewer devices in the combustion step. Okay, so on the right side, you have the typical PFC with uh, bridge diodes. So that the, on the le left side, you have uh, the bridges not important. So the topology here consists of uh, two half bridge configuration, one half bridge, so which is commonly referred as a fast leg, switches at the PWM frequency. So can be in range of uh, even hundreds of kilohertz. On the other hand, so commonly refers as a slow leg, so that the switches at the AC line frequency, so 50 or 60 hertz. The fast leg switches perform the role of uh, the switch and the diode in a classical uh, boost PFC. That is this switches function to regulate the output voltage and shape the input current to provide high power factor corrector and low harmonic destruction. The, low, uh, the slow leg switches perform the role of the diode bridge in a classical boost PFC. So active switches with very low on resistance are utilized instead of diodes, resulting in a proven efficiency. The top and pole PFC operates with only slow leg and one fast leg device in the conduction path together. Whereas a, a conventional boost PFC operate with two bridge diodes at one active switches or the boost diodes in the conduction path. So fewer devices also with better performance in the conduction path and active switches replacing the bridges diodes. So this allowed the PFC, proton pole PFC topology to achieve an higher system efficiency and a higher power density than the classical boost PFC. Moreover, uh, totem pole PSC is a derivative of a standard boost PFC converter. So where the bridge uh, diodes are uh, removed and therefore the boost circuitry direct interface with AC input. So here, a key important challenges is uh, with this approach is uh, are the detection of the line polarity. So current sense and current limit implementation. Uh, further, totem pole PSC is a synchronous boost converter as opposite to the standard boost PSC implementation, which is a synchronous. So all the above mentioned <laughs> requirements are of course implemented in our NCP 1681, as we will see later. Um, I would say it's also important to note that the similarity to a standard boost PFC uh, are present. So criteria for selecting the boost inductor, the output capacitor, the boost uh, MOSFET are exactly the same between a totem pole PFC and a standard boost PFC. So this helps also in the design of a new uh, application. Now, let's have a look about uh, NCP 6081. So, totem pole uh, bridgeless totem pole PFC in CCM or multimodal PFC control. When we're talking about power factor correction, there are different topologies uh, available. We have interleaved boosters, semi bridgeless booster, interleaved CRM totem pole, and uh, what we are discussing today, the bridgeless totem poles. All of them have different uh, characteristics. Which are the advantage of uh, the bridges to temple in this case? So we can see that first of all, the kind of uh, technology you can use as transistor. All of the other topology are using mainly standard silicon or super, super junction set. While in a totem pole PSC, uh, you can have uh, uh, super junctions, you can use wet bang up like GAN or silicon carbide for CRM. And we strongly suggest to use only wet bang up like uh, GAN or SIC for CCM, so for hard switching, switching frequency. Let's say uh, we always been in the lower path of hundreds of kilohertz, while with a totem pole PSC, you can, in a CRM, you can easily achieve up to 500 kilohertz, even one megahertz is possible. Efficiency, so quite high. Uh, the main advantage are of course that you have a high efficiency, so this means also very high power density. In case of using of uh, gallium nitride, uh, you also have uh, a zero QRR, so do the technology itself. And uh, as mentioned before, we have less components of the conduction path, so you have a low components count. Which are the application for uh, a bridges to temple PSC solution? 
are very various. So you can have it in high power LED street lighting, you can have it in industrial power supplies, PSU, UPS, you can have in external adapter power supplies, 5G telecom power supplies, high power adapter, data center, rack mounted power supplies, and so on. So basically we can say that you can use a, a totem pole PSC to match all the application where efficiency and compactness are critical parameters for your design. Let's have a look about uh, uh, the total pole PSC scenario, market scenario today, which are the advantage from our solution. So let's say that today, I would say all the existing solution on the market are of total pole PSC are MCU based. So this means that you have to take in account a high bomb cost, microcontrollers or the uh, feature to control it. You need to develop a dedicated software code development. So this means also a huge impact in terms of timing, updating of the software and firmware and so on. And then is also translated into a complex design, which can be also time consuming, especially for the time to market application. Which are the advantage? So if uh, we look at our solution, so NCP 6080 and 81, because it's a uh, full family, is a mixed signal. Uh, solution. We are cost effective because you are reducing all the cost of MCUs, all the cost of the external component. It must simplify the system. You have an optical bill of material for uh, your application. And last but not least, so you also have a fast development, which is also can be translated into uh, saving cost uh, and time to market. So those are the real advantages that our solution can bring into the market. Now let's have a look about uh, uh, NCP 1681. So it's a total PFC controller, it's part of a family uh, of uh, devices, is a multi-mode, we come in two different versions, so multi-mode or CCM, so critical conduction mode, uh, total pole PFC controller. So it is capable of operating in a fixed frequency, CCM, cost on time, CRM, and value synchronized frequency fallback in order to optimize the efficiency across the entire uh, load range. Remember, so the bridges totem pole PFC consists of two totem pole legs. So the fast switching legs, three driver at the PWM switching frequency, and the second leg that operate in the SC line frequency. This topology, remember, eliminates the diode bridge present and the input of a conventional PFC circuitry. So this means that you're allowing a significant improve in efficiency and in power density. The device of the families comes with a novel current sensing architecture, a proven control algorithms for all the operating modes and a suite of protection features. Uh, so we can say that uh, the NCP6081 in this case allows for a really cost-effective solution without jeopardizing the performance. Uh, the 6081 is available as a fixed frequency or in a multi-mode uh, uh, devices. So depends on uh, the power level you want you want to achieve. So which are the main feature? Again, is industry first mixing a controller in the market. So it's based on a state machine core, which is fully dedicated to a totem pole PFC topology. It's easy to implement compared to existing totem pole solution. Uh, it's all close to a analog standard analog design, really cost effective, fast go to market, and no need to expensive software update. It comes with uh, um, frequency fallback, which is the first line of defense. So we reduce the switching frequency with light loads, but you still have the valleys, so which is the second line of defense. So the valley switching. So we actively detect the valleys. We run with uh, a proprietary current sensing. So we have a proprietary sensing of uh, the zero cross detection resistor, and we also detect the peak current value. We also use it for current limiting and protection, so which is a more elegant and simple solution. Traditional totem poles use a digital controller, so MC or DSP. So our solution represents uh, uh, um, all the old factors are needed in this application. So this is also saving uh, the, the, the cost system. And the control loop is internally compensated. So no external components are needed for this. It also comes with uh, uh, the main uh, safety requires uh, like a brownout detection, PFC OK, so which is a sort of power good indicator to use for uh, an LLC or the secondary stage, software start uh, application, 
over voltage protection and the voltage thermal shutdown and of course cycle to cycle current. Where to use? Okay, basically we can say that you can go the old application at PFC with high density and high efficiency. Uh, is a single phase, let's see, up to three kilowatt maximum is needed. And it's also housed in industrial friendly SO uh, standard 20 pins with uh, no body. Now let's have a look about the reference design. So we're talking about one kilowatt universal input, 48 volt power supplies. Um, the main parts are of course the NCP6081, but here you can see all the specification. We are talking about uh, input voltage range, so is universal from 90 to 265 uh, volt AC, and the line frequency range is between 47 and 63 hertz. Output is a fixed output voltage of 48 volt with a maximum output current of 21 amp. The dimension, so as we discussed before, so this application or this topology is used to very high efficiency and high power density device. So the dimension here you can see is only 278 millimeters or 20, 20, close to 8, 28 centimeters by nine centimeters, only five centimeters, uh, centimeters high. So it's very compact for the power range we have. Which are the main uh, parts we're using? Okay, we already talked about the PFC controller 681. We are using our NCP 301994, our LSC controller with integrated driver. For the synchronous certification controller, we can use uh, the NCP 4306 and the NCP 4307. We also use the quasi governmental controller for the standby application. So the NCP 1344, 43, sorry, precision reference. We are using isolated uh, galvanic isolated gate drivers, so the NCP 51561 to control uh, the drivers and uh, LDOs for different regulators. The switching devices here, we have uh, for most of them are GAN transistor with integrated driver. We also have for the synchronous gratification transistor uh, MOSFET for medium voltage MOSFET. And for the slow leg transistor, we have a standard uh, super junction. Is a light, is a main board, is only two layers. So easy to uh, build up. It works on a modular concept. We are using PFC uh, fret wire inductor, bridgeless PFC, GAN technology to achieve the maximum in terms of efficiency. And the LLC is running at more than, higher than 300 kilos of switching frequency. And there's a full synchro rectifier. I would like the board. So here we have the picture of the boards from the top and from a free third to see a little bit the, the, uh, the profile. So on the top, we can see here uh, the MEF EMI filter. We can see the bulk capacitors. Uh, here we have, uh, for the PFC stage, we have uh, uh, the fast leg card and the slow leg card and the PFC control uh, card. So here we have the PFC flat wire choke. And on the, let's say from the, 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 the to see the profile, here we will see, of course, his work on uh, some force cooling, not so big, but we have it. We have uh, the LSS control card here. We have the LSC half bridge card, the synchronization card, and the standby power supply. The concept here is a really modular approach. And we can you can change uh, parts uh, really adapting at your needs. Which are the key components? We already talked about the totem four PFC, the sixteen eighty one, but uh, uh, this kind of performance cannot be achieved with the rest of the components from our portfolio. First of all, we have the NCP 301994. This is a very high performance current mode LCC controller. Uh, is a half bridge LCC resonant converter. Uh, it works on a wide range of uh, bulk or line voltages. It's a current mode. Uh, it works with a 700 volt as high voltage startup and driver. The frequency is quite wide. It can go from 20 kilohertz, so to be above of uh, audible noise, up to 750 kilohertz. So this means that this device is already able to support ultra high density design, especially with, with gun transistor. It works uh, very well in light mode, so it's been designed for this. It also include a X2 discharge mode, uh, quite skip mode, and also you option for have a longer depth times uh, in order to have a better uh, suitable for efficiency. It includes all the uh, main feature and protection like uh, brownout, over voltage, uh, also have a, a clamped drive output. 
is quite good in terms of VCC rate, so it's up to 30 volt. And also he has the input for uh, the PFC stage operation in order to control uh, to be controlled in all kinds of load conditions. Automatic data time maximum clamp. And he also been designed for a pin 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 to pin shorts and open shorts detection. And here you can see the package, uh, which is very standard, uh, also 20 pin, uh, 16 pin, sorry, uh, SOI. And then you can see all the drivers are embedded into the system. So you can see a typical application diagrams. Another important point, this is used for uh, the standby card or the auxiliary power supplies, is the NCP 1342 or 43. So this comes uh, uh, for a family of uh, high frequency quasi resonant controller. It's very high integrated playback controller, quasi resonant, uh, controlling rugged and high performance offline power supplies. Uh, the 1342 integrates uh, what is called power extortion mode. So this helps to minimize the transformer side. So having very high uh, performance in transient low capability, but with a smaller size of the transformer. It works with wireless switching operation. Uh, so have a maximum efficiency on the entire uh, power range. Twice skip technology. So we announce uh, this uh, topology in order to be at the operation always outside the edible range. It works with a rapid frequency feedback. The 7042 comes with what's so called a power extortion mode, so to minimize the transformer size. And also includes all uh, the typical the typical protection for those kind of uh, capabilities. And also it comes with two different packs. So the standard SO8, eight links, or the SO9 uh, pins. And also those parts are pin comp pin compatible with all the family. Uh, of NCP 1346. Another important parameter, uh, part, sorry, <coughs> to take an account is for the secondary side synchronous notification. So here we have the NCP 4306, uh, so high performance driver. Uh, here is already tailored to use, due to the flexibility, is also tailored to use uh, uh, already available for gun transistor capability. Very fast and very flexible. It can work in different technologies like uh, DCM, CCM flyback, quasi resonant flyback. Forward out bridge resonant LLC. As well, the 4307, uh, also here is uh, including uh, a self supply, dual VCC spin, which are the main difference between uh, uh, this and the previous device, and also a positive DV on the T detection. For what regarding uh, the isolation uh, and the driver, so we are using the CP51561, which is a five kilowatt. Uh, galvanic isolated uh, uh, high speed dual driver. So it's a dual channel uh, with, uh, with organic isolation, inductive isolation. So this is a perfect device suitable for driving high performance MOSFET or even silicon carbide FET. So this means that it's a dual channel uh, with high power strength, so high power sink and source uh, current, so 4.5 or 9 amps, uh, 5 uh, kilovolt uh, RMS isolation barrier. And it works with a very, very small or low propagation delay times and delay mismatch. And also the device is able to achieve higher than 200 volt per nanosecond on DV on DT in unit. So this is also very important for this. Now, level look of the design. So totem pole PS stage, we have the daughter course. So here we have the fast leg with the driver, so the NCP 651561 and the two integrated driver gun with the control card. Uh, with the on, on the backside. So we have the slow leg cart with the current sensing as well. And here you have the diagrams of uh, the PFC stage. So control card, current sensing card, slow leg and fast leg, and then the control circuitry. If we're talking about uh, the fast leg card, so we have, again, the isolated driver, uh, 51561, and using, uh, here we're using a 650 volt, 50 milliom gun, uh, FET with integrated driver into the system to achieve the best performance as possible. For the slow leg, we are using again uh, the isolated driver to have a better performance in terms of uh, DV on DT. And here we are using uh, um, standard power MOS in super junction, 64 million with an 8x8 uh, DFN pin. PFC control card. It includes the 6081 with all the circuitry around. So it's also a very simple and modular effect. 
And for what regard the current sensing, also here simple, so we have all the current transformers used to setting uh, the system. If we move to the LLC stage, uh, here we have the, pot, the, 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 the picture, so the standby card with uh, uh, the uh, 3043, NCP4043, we have the LCC control card with the 131994, uh, the hard bridge card with the two gun here, and also we have the synchronous certification card with the MOSFET, the, the driver, and on the back you can see the transform. Again, here is the, the schematic diagrams. Here we have the inputs, so we have the standby card, the control interface, and the hard bridge for the LLC. A little bit more in details, here we have the schematic diagrams, here we have uh, again the two uh, 50 million gun with integrated driver. Uh, this is important to achieve the performance on NLC. And also in this case, the, the driving signal in a short but isolated driver, our NCP 51561. And as well, the eyesight supply is using a standard bootstrap uh, circuit. Control car for the LLC. Here we have the NCP 3094 with the drivers. Uh, with a signal for the integrated driver, we are going to control uh, the half bridge um, topologies. Standby card, also here is very important. So here we have uh, our main power switches. Also here we're using driver with integrated gun. So here we're using 150 million uh, device. We're using a synchronous certification, uh, 60 volt MOSFET, seven milliamps. So the NTM5, uh, FS5, uh, CX60, so five by six. We are using our NCP3043, so quite suggest no flyback, and uh, the NCP4307 synchronous certification MOSFET controller in, in, in the standby card. For the synchronous certification card, we are using 120 volt MOSFET, 7.2 milliamps. So here's the pan number. We're using the NCP4306 as a synchronous certification controller. Uh, and here a re is a, due to the flexibility of the device, we are able to use this device, so the 4306, in order to uh, have the maximum flexibility in terms of power and configuration. Now, let's have a look about uh, the, the result. So if you remember how it looks like uh, the 80 plus titanium, so you will have to be more than 60% uh, percent in efficiency overall. So here is what we're achieving. Uh, more than 96 and also we are performance very good also on the low line so 110 volts so on the full range of uh, uh, of, of the load so very really very high uh, efficiency in a very compact solution and as well the power factor correct of course uh, we have for the low line we have really close to uh, one and we always are well above uh, 0 0.93 on, on almost uh, uh, the uh, full load ranges Another important parameters when we talk about high power density and efficiency are, of course, uh, uh, the thermal management. Here we can see the thermal images of the PSC, so the fast leg card, so using uh, um, integrated driver gun. So here we see the picture, and here is the, is, uh, the, uh, the fast leg card. And here you can see the thermal image above 110 volt AC and 230 volt AC, one kilowatt. Basically, you can see that ambient temperature is around 28 degrees. So you can see there's a very minimal uh, increase on the, on the FC choke, and we only have 73 degrees in total. So less around, let's say, 30 degrees of uh, uh, rising in temperature, while the, the situation is much, much better at 230 degrees. So, so 230 volt AC, when you have only, let's say, 12 volt, uh, degrees in terms of rising of temperature. So this is also important in order to keep all your system cooler and safe, as well as on the LLC, Albridge card. So here we can see uh, the hottest point is the transformer. So with around 80 degrees on the low line, while uh, the two FET and the two GAN are uh, quite cool, I would say, in the range of uh, 42, 46 uh, degrees. So less than uh, 20 degrees of uh, increasing uh, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of degrees. On the high line, 230 volt AC, even better. So the, the, we stop to have uh, rise increase in terms of temperature up to 
let's say close to 40 degrees. So it's a bit higher because you are so very close to the to the transformer, and uh, um, only 41 degrees for the, the uh, far away one. And then of course the hottest point is on the transformer in the range of 70 degrees. So at the end, if we to put the highlights of this uh, um, solution, first of all, efficiency. We need to consider the peak efficiency in this situation. We need to consider everything we discussed about energy saving. So here we're touching 96.2 as a peak efficiency, as half load, which is, is what is needed in terms of uh, achieve uh, the best uh, uh, performance and, and the standard, for example, for 80 plus titanium at 110 volt AC and 95% with 240 volt AC. And the power factor corrector at one kilowatt, we are always above 98%. Uh, so with a peak of 99.5% with uh, uh, in the low light, so up to 110 volt uh, AC. So those are the highlights for this uh, uh, reference design. Those are any questions? Okay, so now we are back again. First of all, Alessandro, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Yeah, as you have already mentioned, now we would like to turn our attention to your questions and we can already see some questions which came in. So, yeah, if you also have some questions afterwards, you can also just email us. You see directly the emails um, on the slide at the moment. But yeah, Alessandro, let's start with the Q&A and with the first question. Mm -hmm. Which is the maximum switch, uh, switching frequency achievable by a CCM bridgeless totem pole? That's a good question. So, uh, in principle, uh, of course, it depends a lot of uh, the application, a lot of the output power. But let's say uh, a maximum achievable switching frequency using a wet band gap uh, switches uh, is rendable up to around 150 kilowatts. We already have other solution. Uh, with a range of uh, three kilowatt already using this kind of uh, frequency, but in theory can be much higher, even almost double. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Then let's go on. Next question. Hello, and thanks for the presentation. That's a nice feedback. Thank you. Um, <laughs> can you please say something about the input EMI filter, especially the problems with standard components and high switching frequencies? So yes, so here basically the EMI filter is one of uh, the critical point because uh, the device is switching uh, a very high uh, frequency. Uh, the EMI filter has to be proper design. And I think here, uh, people from uh, Wood Electronics are probably the best uh, in terms of solving uh, uh, these issues because I think they have a lot of uh, uh, standard component available for such applications. So all the, part, all the products, uh, all the components you see in this, in this application are came from, of course, uh, from boot electronics. So I think uh, if you can get in contact with your boot electronics uh, uh, teams, they are more than happy to provide the best situation as a standard product for such application. Okay, thank you very much. Then let's go on with the next one. Mm -hmm. Are there any other packages available or planned? Um, not at the moment. So we see that uh, this is a very good compromise in terms of uh, uh, industrial friendly uh, system. So this is a quite uh, standard package. Also considering that, uh, I don't know if you remember, but when you see the uh, pin out, uh, you see that there's a couple of missing uh, pins. So this was very important in terms of uh, isolation. Uh, we don't see at the moment a reason of uh, moving to, for example, a QFM packaging, uh, but uh, yeah, if it's something of the market can uh, can be required for sure, why not? Okay. Then we have still some time left for some other questions. Like here, the next one, what is the power density achieved with this design in WE per cent? Um, it's not square centimeter. It's a cubic inch. 
So the power density here for uh, uh, watt per cubic inch, uh, here we are more than 40 uh, watt per cubic inch. Okay, thank you very much. So then just the next one, why is there a wide band gap semiconductor needed for a totem pole PFC? This is a good question. So um, we say that it's not really needed, but it's strongly recommended in order to achieve the maximum, the maximum benefit of this topology. Uh, so in which case we can talk about a CCM totem pole PFC. Uh, is a hard switching topology. And GAN, for example, are, have no inherent body diode. So there's no reverse recovery charge. So that would contribute to switching losses. So that's in answer that, that enabling the ultimate PFC efficiency to be achieved. So this is also important. Uh, the body diode of a sick MOSFET still has a no zero reverse recovery a charge, but uh, it's much lower compared to a standard silicon MOSFET. Um, so we can say that probably with a, for, for, uh, with a GAN, uh, we, can be, we can have a slightly higher efficiency than co uh, something compared to, uh, to a SIC, but really it's much more higher than uh, using a standard silicon fed. Okay, then I think we have time for one more question. Also here, thanks for your clear presentation. Could you give an order of magnitude of cost of this power? Um, let's say, uh, I cannot give you an order of magnitude in terms of uh, uh, power itself. So this is a device which is the range of, uh, let's say one euro or a little bit one and a half euro. The real cost uh, uh, benefit is an overall system. So of course, uh, I cannot judge in terms of, uh, because everyone has a different uh, solution and also uh, is a different uh, power density level. But I would say comparison between a standard PFC topology and a totem pole PFC topology, more or less at the same level, we can say you can address probably 20% uh, higher cost than a standard solution. But we need to take into consideration that here we're using also uh, more performance uh, uh, devices like what bang up uh, gun and C carbide they are still more uh, costly than than uh, uh, standard super junction mosfet for example okay thank you very much alessandro um one more question because mm -hmm. it's regarding this question also um cost of this converter and also for the topology for one kilowatt is mm -hmm. there yeah anything to add this solution, well, okay, uh, again, we need to compare uh, this solution with what is required by, uh, or what the solution want to achieve. This is a very compact and high performance solution dedicated for, um, especially for server market. So you really need to have the highest uh, power density possible. Of course, uh, this means that this solution uh, is probably a little bit costly or what you can achieve with a standard or less, uh, let's say, push to the edge uh, one kilowatt solution. Uh, this, of course, uh, we are like comparing, uh, uh, you know, a Formula One with a standard car. But again, uh, it's not so expensive as you think. We are probably in the range of a uh, few tens of percentages higher than a standard application based on totem pole PFC and white banger as well. Okay. Then, Alessandro, thank you very much for your answers. And also, thank you very much for your time today and your presentation. Thanks uh, to you and to all the people uh, on, on the call. Thanks a lot. So we see there are also some questions left in the Q&A, but mm -hmm. we will answer them later on via email. And as said, if you have any questions left, just email us. Then I hope we can see you again in our next sessions of the Digital V-Days and I wish you a good day. Thank Excellent. you very much. Bye.